Hello, everyone, and welcome to Job Board Geek. It's the podcast about the business of connecting candidates and employers. I'm Jeff Dickey Chasens, the Job Board Doctor. I am your host. And with me, I have the sometimes sneaky Stephen Rothberg of College Recruiter. He's the co-host. Hey, Stephen, how you doing? I'm good, Jeff. It is uh, really wonderful to be with you. And uh, for once, there are two of us with the same name. And so we've, we're outnumbering you today. Yeah, well, you know, I'll talk to the one that I think has the better accent. Um, and, I'll, see you and, next, I'll see you next episode. See you later. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> yes, so today we have uh, a guy with a great accent and a wonderful sense of humor and incredible knowledge of the UK job board scene, Stephen O'Donnell of Nora's. And also he's got a new gig now with TA Tech. So he'll tell us all about that. But first of all, Stephen, I just wanted to talk a little bit about something that popped up in the news in the past couple of days. There's a company down in Austin called WorkRise. Uh, most people probably would remember it from its original name as RigUp. It just announced that it's laying off a lot of people. Mm -hmm. It didn't say how many, but at the last time they raised money in May, they raised about $300 million uh, to... Uh, pushed themselves to a $2.9 billion valuation. Uh, they had 600 employees in 25 offices. Uh, according to some anonymous information that was being posted, they laid off 450 of those 600 people. So that's pretty substantial. Now, now what WorkRise does, it's, it started back in 2014. It was basically uh, you know, a workplace, a uh, marketplace for people in the energy industry. And they decided to change their name in 2021 to WorkRise because they decided they wanted to go into other verticals. So in addition to oil and gas, they moved into construction and defense and solar and wind. And apparently, from what I can see, that pivot didn't work out. And yeah. it, interestingly enough, this is not the first time that the company has done this. Back in 2020, they laid off a quarter of their corporate employees at one, when the COVID pandemic hit. And so I, I'm just amused, uh, I guess, amused at one point, in one sense, uh, how they portray this as a pivot, when to me it <laughs> looks like we stuck our foot out too far, we didn't know what we were doing, we failed, and now we're, now we're going back. And I'm also amused at their ability to continue to get funding, despite the fact that they keep falling on their face. And then I'm not amused about the poor employees that got laid off of this. It's, you mm. know, it's, it really seems to be a shame, but that's my take on it. What about you? What do you think? Well, yeah, not amused about the, the employees who have lost their jobs, but at least if you're going to lose your job, to lose your job in this kind of labor market, yeah, that's not true. such a bad thing. Right. Um, you know, unfortunately, we're all old enough to remember pretty well other recessions. And in other recessions, when you lose your job, you can easily be out of work for six months, 12 months, 24 months. It can be devastating to you and, and, and your family. But Boy, if you're a software developer that just got laid off with WorkRise and maybe you got a severance package, you probably already have eight job offers and you're going back to work. And so you're in a way doubling up. Um, I'm also really amazed like you are at, at the amount of money that they were able to raise very recently right. and how quickly this has all happened. And then, yeah, when it was reading about it, I, I just, I don't understand why they had so many offices um, and some of the overhead that, that they had. Um, it the, the fact of sort of going out of one vertical and into multiple verticals, that's not necessarily a recipe for failure, right? You might have really good software, really good way of, you know, creating that secret sauce on the background. And then that can translate really well into other industries. Um, but the, I don't understand why a company has 25 offices in, in this day and age. If it's a, even if it's a staffing company, how many people come into your office if they're looking for a job that should just be done online. So it really seems to me like they had a massive amount of overhead going. 
Yeah, it's it for me. It was a little bit of back to the future because, as as you know, I got a, into the job board industry back in '97 with Dice, and we went through a very very rapid period of growth over the three years I was with Dice. But one of the things that was happening in the industry at that point is there was a lot of money being thrown around, uh, mm. being thrown at companies like Dice, companies like Monster, et cetera. And then about the time I left, there was a huge crash. And mm-hmm. it was the same thing. You sort of look back on it and say, where did all the money go? And I, I definitely remember money being spent on multiple offices for you know, different types of favored employees, you know, oh, I don't want to have to commute into the city. Well, then we'll set up mm. an office for you in, in Connecticut or, you know, whatever it might be. So I, I don't, I'm not sure that was the case with WorkRise, but um, <laughs> I think their investors are going to take a bath on this one. So, yeah, you know, the, the offices for favored employees, it, uh, it rings a bit of a bell for me because I've often been asked to be in another office very, very far away from everybody else. So I'm just going to take that as, as being a sign that I'm a favored employee. And I think we can all agree on that. Uh, I, I think that might have been more about the company surviving, but um, I think we should anyway. move on, don't you? <laughs> yeah, I guess we should. <laughs> um, well, uh, as I mentioned earlier, today we have a guest from overseas, from the um, British Isles, I guess I should say, or perhaps I shouldn't say that. Um, Stephen O'Donnell, he uh, founded Nora's, and he can tell us all about that. He's also working at TA Tech, which used to be IAEWS. And Stephen, welcome to Job Board Geek. Afternoon, fellas. It's great to be here. Really nice to be here. Uh, Long-time fan of the show. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, You may be the only fan. I'm not sure. But I I do appreciate that. So, uh, Stephen, why don't you start out by just sort of giving us some background on how you happened to get into the recruiting industry, and maybe you can also tell us how Norris came to be. Uh, well, th- th- this will be my 35th year in recruitment. Uh, so I've pretty wow. much always been in recruitment. Uh, before that, uh, I was a fax machine salesman. So that really dates me, uh, selling fax machines. When, and that was, bef- that was before fax machines caught on. Uh, so uh, <laughs> that, that, that really dates me even further. Uh, but uh, until recently, I would say to people that uh, most of that time I spent owning and running recruitment companies. But I've just realized now that uh, most of that time has been on the technology technology side of online recruitment. Uh, there was a bit of overlap, but uh, in, in 2000, I set up, uh, I set up a, a, a job, well, a, a job board, I set up a website, which was essentially a signpost to every recruitment agency and employer and job board in the UK. Uh, and uh, at the same time was trying to run a recruitment agency and pretty quickly realized that uh, uh, riding two horses with one backside just wasn't, uh, wasn't, wasn't doable. <laughs> Uh, but uh, so so I, I drifted out of owning a recruitment company, and I've been in technology ever since. Uh, and around that time, as a, as a promotion for that website, uh, I set up the uh, the, the NORAS, the National Online Recruitment Awards. And the purpose of that, bluntly, was uh, it was a marketing exercise. I thought it, it would be great to win an award, but the next best thing to winning an award is being the person who's giving out the awards. If I mm-hmm. If I give an award to Monster, for example, they've got a big marketing department and they'll shout to uh, the world about it. So, uh, so I thought that's 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 kind of a cool thing to do in a good marketing exercise. But of course, it grew arms and legs. It's been going ever since. This will be our twenty second year of the Noras, and uh, and and the, the 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 website that I built way back then has long since gone. It was sold in two thousand seven. Uh, but I've worked with a number of. Uh, uh, tech companies in in the time in between, from from uh, aggregators to psychometric evaluation companies, uh, uh, AI searching and matching, video technology, all of those. Wow! So that's that's really quite a broad background. And I think I first met you, I want to say six seven years ago at one of the conferences. Might have, might have been mm-hmm. longer than that. Um, yeah. And I and I remember being really struck by the Noras because for for whatever reason there really wasn't any equivalent type of awards uh, and particularly the way you've got it set up in yeah. the U.S. and uh, I was I was jealous to be quite honest. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I made the mistake, which turned out to be lucky, uh, of not knowing how awards events were supposed to be run when I set it up uh, because. I, I, and I don't want to point fingers at any other awards events, but industry awards 
always seemed to be for the participants a, a bit of a, a backslapping exercise. And and uh, the way that companies submit themselves, they put in uh, submission evidence and so on, and the judging process that they go through uh, it is quite different, what's very different to how the NORAs are done. We take nominations from the public in the first place, so we ask job seekers uh, to nominate sites. We don't restrict it to, uh, to, to only sites that submit themselves. Uh, so every recruitment website that's out there, anyone who's advertising vacancies or offering a career service to candidates, uh, we're going to judge them. And we only judge from a candidate's perspective. So we only judge what we can see. Uh, if we can't see it, we can't judge it. So uh, everything is done from the perspective of the job seeker. I sometimes say to people that I'm the the the, the, uh, the hardest working job seeker in the UK because each year I'll, <laughs> I'll I'll register with maybe 600 separate recruitment websites and and apply for jobs and uh, and go through the process just to see how they're doing it and uh, it, it it's strange how in the past 22 years how much has remained the same uh, where mm-hmm. where you know some things have uh, have have changed dramatically and. Uh, uh, I always, I always hoped. In fact, we're coming around to that now. I always hoped that candidates would get to the position where they could push back, where they could say, uh, "We, mm. we don't want to go through these hoops in order to apply for that job." Uh, and candidates are in a much stronger position now to uh, to, to to walk away, uh, which of course comes out in the form of, of, of what we would call ghosting these days. They get partway mm-hmm. through the process and, and don't go any further. Yeah, that, that that's awesome, and and it's interesting, Jeff, that the timing when you met Stephen was around the same time when when I did. It was a different event. Um, I um, I met Stephen at an event, uh, tr- a true London event that uh, Bill Borman um, organized, and I remember walking away from that thinking that there's one like really really um, cheeky sarcastic person in the room, and his name is Stephen. Um, and that, um, and that <laughs> kind of reminded me of, of being in, yeah, of being in seventh grade when, uh, you know, they're like, you know, me and one of my friends would just be continually kicked out in the hall. I kind of thought that was going to happen to us, but, uh, yeah. um, so if anybody hasn't had the pleasure of Steven, of sitting um, next to Steven at an event, um, definitely <laughs> that's what you that's what you want to yeah. do. Um, w- wicked yeah. smart, um, very um, knowledgeable, and uh, definitely is going to keep you on your toes. Um, yeah. So, what I'd like to ask you, Stephen, is is about your your new gig um, with TA mm-hmm. Tech for 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 listeners who have been around for as long as the us three old folks have been. Um, it was born as the uh, as IAEWS, the International Association yeah. of Employment Websites. Um, I think um, Peter Weddle, the the CEO, changed the name roughly five years ago um, to TA mm-hmm. Tech to an, to sort of broaden um, to inc- to be more inclusive of different kinds of talent acquisition. Um, mm-hmm. Some of the people who go to the conferences are are job board people. Um, some of them are going to be those uh, solution providers that are somewhat related: advertising agencies, job distributors, um, RPOs, people selling resume parsing software, whatever. Um, but maybe you can tell us a little bit about um, a couple things. Mm-hmm. One, one would be sort of like your specific role, what you were yeah. brought in to do. Um, and then also, I'm really curious, and I think others are as well, about what your vision is for the actual events. You know, coming out of yeah. COVID, we've all been able to do a reset. And yeah. there are always good and bad things. Um, and kind of curious as to what... Um, for those of us who used to go to virtually every TA Tech event and plan to go to ones in the future, what what will be different yeah. moving forward? Okay, okay. Well, first of all, to to to, to break it down, I I can't even remember those those letters myself, but I think that's my first word in Wordle uh, every night because it's got all the vowels, so I A E W S. It's got everything in there, but of course, it's impossible to remember. So I think we're all thankful that it's it, it, it renamed to TA Tech, and t- TA Tech is exactly what it is. It's technology for for for, for, for talent acquisition. Uh, I was actually due to, due to join the organisation uh, uh, two years ago, uh, just as the pandemic hit, uh, and I'd oh. been on the advisory board for a few years before that. Uh, and in fact, uh, an event that I'd set up in the UK uh, was being used at TA Tech events called RecX. So RecX is essentially, it's mm. kind of rip off of TEDx. Uh, so it's TED Talks for recruitment. It's 15 minutes of a tight 
you know, passionate talk on recruitment. And we we ran uh, 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 RecX events in London and in Portugal and in Austin, uh, so sometimes myself or uh, sometimes with TA Tech. So as I say, I was due to join two years ago, but the pandemic hit. And uh, when it came back around uh, with... Hopefully, we're coming out of the, uh, the pandemic. Uh, I, mm-hmm. I jumped at the chance to uh, to, to get on board. Uh, given my background in, in recruitment and technology, and I'm a I, I'm a lover of gadgets and, uh, and and the way that tech works, but more than that, the way that tech impacts the people that are uh, affected by how the technology uh, is is put into place, how it's adopted, how it's it's it's, it's used by people in the front line. Uh, then TA Tech makes absolute sense for me. Not only that, but in all the years that I've been running the NORAs, I've always said to people, I'm not an events organizer. I just happen to organize some events inadvertently. <laughs> uh, and and uh, the, the the building of a community, the building of uh, you know a, 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 a big network, if you like, uh, where I'm speaking with a lot of organizations in the industry, from employers to recruitment firms to uh, technology companies and, and so on, uh, it gives me a real insight to what they do and how they do it. And it's actually, it's very similar to when I was working as a recruitment consultant, dealing with my clients. So if I would have a, an insight to each of those organizations, it might be, you know, big manufacturers like IBM uh, and National Semiconductor or tiny little companies who are supplying those big manufacturers. But I always, always found it fascinating to have that helicopter view of what they did. And in the same way with TA Tech, I have this and, uh, as a as a born Novosi Parker, I love to have that 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 peek behind the curtains. <laughs> uh, so, uh, in terms of events, uh, obviously, in the past couple of years, events have had uh, a, a, a huge uh, shake up. Uh, we've we've all seen the, the the Zoom events and the the virtual events and and so on. And and actually, in the pandemic, I got involved with quick because everyone everyone pivoted to an extent if you can't get out to events then you do something different so actually in some ways i was helping organizations organize their online events because i'm pretty well uh, versed with the technology some of the so some of the organizations i'd, I'd help would be well a lot, a lot of them in the states but the one that's a standout uh, is the miss america organization uh, so they're, they're they're online events i'd be helping to organize and it, it, it meant that I'm 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 now in first name terms with at least I think thirteen or fourteen Miss Americas, including the Miss America from 1948. Uh, so, so well, if, it, if, it, if it, only you again, could have been surrounded by attractive women like that in high school. But uh... <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. But uh, <laughs> as I say, having a peek into any industry is always really interesting. But uh, the the key thing is seeing how uh, people responded to uh, to to the demand to have events, but the, the the block to having in-person events. Uh, in the past few months, I've been, well, there was a couple towards the end of last year, and luckily there was a window where in the UK everyone was let out, and that window allowed us to have the Noras, uh, which was great. Mm. But then, of course, it, it locked down again. Uh, and the, the prediction as to how events are going to roll out in the future... Uh, it's not so much it's anybody's guess, but we know that it's it's a movable feast. We know that that uh, everything is in flux. Uh, there's a number of companies I've been speaking with about uh, their hybrid events uh, or you know committing fully to have uh, in-person events. I went to an in-person event in February this year uh, in London, and and I got COVID again. Uh, same event that I got COVID two years yeah. ago. So this time not so bad, so it's fine. But. Uh, Everyone is conscious about uh, well, what are the new protocols going to be, and anyone who organises events has to have that in mind. And also understanding that employers might uh, they might say, "Well, look, yes, events are open; we can go and see people, but we have new policies on who who gets to events, whether we do it as a matter of policy, uh, whether we pick and choose events more carefully, uh, whether we look closely at how." the protocols are impl- uh, put in place in, in those events. Uh, but certainly going forward, uh, the, the the in-person events with TA Tech are absolutely happening this year. The next one is in Austin uh, on the, uh, well, it begins on the, the evening of the 31st of May uh, to mm-hmm. June the 2nd. And if people don't know, there are, there are industry organizations for people who are recruitment uh, consultants and agencies, and of course for HR and for TA, there are lots of organizations where there's membership groups. 
TIA Tech is a membership group for technology companies uh, providing technology to uh, the HR and, and TA sector, uh, and it's the, it's, it's the only one. So this event will be the biggest uh, 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 of the year, and certainly going back to 2019, the last one that was able to be held, there were over 500 people there, uh, and we expect the, 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 the same or more uh, for, uh, for, for this event at the end of May. Yeah. So, Stephen, if, if, I... If, if I can just, like, add add a, a couple quick things to the Jeff to that. So, um, College Recruiter has a, at least a couple people going. Um, we have a, a new COO, Brad Boggs, a new head of sales and partnerships, Matt Simpson, who used to be, you probably know him from from, from when he was at JobGate. Um, so, they're going to be there. They're very much looking forward to it. And the reason why we always ha- try to have at least one or two people there, there's just no better event for partnerships. Um, you know, yeah. whether the... Yeah. Whether the whether the, uh, the the bourbon that's served after hours is, is of interest or not, whether the content is of interest or not, everybody that's there is very oriented to partnerships. Um, Absolutely. And, Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So, so, so for pe- people who maybe don't know so much intimately about TA Tech, there are about... 350 members uh, globally. Uh, obviously, the bulk of the members are in North America. And of those, maybe 40% are job boards or tied in with job boards uh, and technologies to do with job boards. But that's moving. Uh, the job boards are, are, are not growing in volume in terms of our membership, but the other technologies are. So uh, th- those, whether it be ATSs uh, or all of the, 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 the secondary techs that hook into the ATSs, are in need of that that catalyst to collaborate, uh, and that's exactly what uh, TA Tech is. So, putting together organisations where they're uh, uh, working with each other, where they're deep linking with each other, where they're uh, they're they're creating a, a new channel for sales. If, for example, and I'm 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 not picking a company that's a, mem- that's a member or not a member, but if smart recruiters, for example, uh, were hooking in with a number of technologies that added additional services to their clients, then that that channel where a customer can switch on uh, a, a video interviewing service within uh, smart recruiters platform uh, or Aperture or, or or any other, uh, then what we're seeing now is that's that's a greater channel for sales than their direct sales. Uh, so. Companies, especially those ATSs, are focusing on that, on that much more so. And, of course, the secondary tech suppliers are seeing that as a, as a great route to sales where they don't have the same cost of sales uh, and, uh, and they have a, a much easier route to, uh, to being switched on and probably, uh, in, in most cases, if it's rolled out correctly, much better adoption rates, which is vital for tech. Well, Stephen, um, this, is, this has been really interesting. Uh, we're out of time, but I did want yeah. to... Uh, ask you, you know, if people want to get a hold of you uh, to talk TA Tech, talk Norris, talk rec- mm-hmm. recruiting in general, how do they do that? Uh, easy to find me on LinkedIn or any of the other channels on Twitter. On on every account I am on social media, it's Stephen O'Don with two ends on the end. Uh, but uh, yeah, easily find me on LinkedIn and uh, send me a connection. Uh, I I'm very much a proponent of uh, of uh, uh, giving favors in order to, uh, to to you know build relationships. So if anyone needs anything from me, I'm more than happy to help, and uh, and I love getting involved. Great, great, and I and I will say um, once once you've talked with Stephen, it's impossible to read anything on his Twitter feed without hearing his accent. So <laughs> <laughs> you have an amazing power there, Stephen. Uh, use it Thank wisely. You. Um, and and uh, Stephen. Rothberg, if people yeah. want to get a hold of you, how do they do that? You know, the easiest way is to invite me for an authentic uh, fish and chips lunch um, at a nice little Scottish uh, um, shop. Um, maybe uh, afterwards we can go for something that Stephen O'Donnell doesn't like, which is a, a nice <laughs> little dram of scotch, which is really, really horrible that a guy from Scotland doesn't like scotch. But I, I, I still like him. him. And, can, uh, I, can I just say forward. that this year, uh, in the past couple of weeks, at least four Americans have contacted me, friends of mine, to say that they're coming to Scotland and can I help them uh, organize their itinerary? So uh, uh, it seems that uh, everyone's coming this direction. And if anyone is, I'd be more than happy to. 
Uh, and if anyone wants to, uh, to to catch me at all next week, I'm starting a new uh, webcast show on Wednesday the 13th uh, called Stepping Up uh, with TA Tech. And my first guest is uh, Josh Thywin uh, of Paradox. That's nice. great. That's great. Yeah. Well, well, listen, folks, this is about it for today's episode of Job Board Geek. I'm glad that you uh, took some time to listen to us. I hope that you'll consider subscribing to us on Apple, Spotify, or any of the other many channels that we're out there on. And always, always, if you're giving a review, remember the thumbs up part of the review is for me, and the thumbs down mm -hmm. part of the review is for the uh, Stephen from College Recruiter. So um, <laughs> anyway, this is Jeff Dickey Chasen, the Job Board Doctor, and you've been listening to the only podcast that focuses on the business of connecting candidates and employers. That's all for now, and we'll see you again next time.